It's always a pleasure when we're here at ICAST to stop by and see our friends at Sirius. Dan Dickerson is always really great to uh, take a moment or two to tell us about Sirius. In the, and in the past, we've talked about the fish mapping, which is just so phenomenal in right. terms of putting guys on the bite, uh, the plankton. It's just such a great tool to get on the bite. But I find, and I think this is where it was a, kind of a start with you guys, right? right. Yeah. It's the weather. Uh, yep. To look at real-time weather, I was telling uh, Dan the story before, a buddy of mine we're, who's talking about being offshore, blue skies, everything looked beautiful, but he hightailed at home because he saw that storm system coming across Philadelphia on a serious app, right. right, and got through. Um, the one question we get a lot, I mean, this is the, the more, I'd say the high-level stuff, the uh -huh. fish mapping and the weather. But when a guy's looking at this and saying, where do I start by getting Sirius installed on my boat? Right. That's the question, Dan. Where does it all start? Right, right. So you have two things to consider. First of all, do you want just the Sirius XM music? Because, you know, once you get six miles offshore, you're going to lose your FM radio. Right. Um, and Sirius is going to work up to about 200 miles offshore. So if you just want music, then you can buy any Sirius XM radio stereo and you can add a little audio uh, Sirius XM receiver, and that sells for about $100. Okay. Um, if you want the weather service, though, now weather is not an audio file, it's a graphical file. So it works in conjunction with your chart plotter, gotcha. and the receivers are proprietary to the chart plotter company. So if you have a Garmin chart plotter, MFD, you're going to be buying a Garmin Sirius XM receiver. If it's a Ray Marine, you're going to be buying a Ray Marine uh, Sirius XM receiver, and so on. So really, if, you, if your electronics is out of date, if you've got an old unit, it's not going to work, so there's going to be an upgrade there. Right. Well, there, you know, there's some things you can think about. If you've got an older system, we've been doing marine weather since 2005. So there are old models that you know That's can true. do it, but you're going to wind up finding probably like a used weather receiver somewhere. You know, the, the current models only work with the current MFDs that are in market. So uh, that's 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 a limitation, if you will. Uh, but yes, so you're gonna you're gonna make sure that your uh, MFD is uh, Sirius XM compatible. And if it is, whatever brand it is, then you're gonna go looking for the compatible Sirius XM receiver that goes with it. Uh, and then it's a pretty simple install. We've got an antenna here. It needs to see the sky. Mm -hmm. Height's not important. So it just it needs to be able to see. You don't want to mount it below deck somewhere. Gotcha. That's going to reduce the signal. Um, and offshore, that's going to hurt you. Uh, it can see through canvas or on a smaller, like a small center console boat. You can put it up on the console. Okay. That's fine. Do you find a lot of guys with the center consoles even still are putting it on the top of the T-top, for a example? -top, yeah, I mean, that's clearly a better place for it. But sometimes running cables can be difficult. Yes, exactly. Um, so, you know, it depends. But, yes, yeah, certainly if you've got a, a hardtop T-top. Again, if it's a canvas T-top, then no, it's not necessary. Gotcha. Um, although they make a lot of different mounting configurations, you know, so you can, like, on a rail on a canvas, this T-top, you could mount it to the rail and still, you know, get it up there out of your way kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, you're going to mount an antenna. Um, there's usually a, a, a box of some sort that goes behind the dash. Um, so the antenna is going to go into that box and coming out of that box, you're going to get power and then a cable going to your MFD and that's it. If you want music, then there's another cable coming out of that box. And here's an interesting point on the music side. When you're dealing with one of these combination receivers that can do both the weather and the music, and by the way, all the current models that can do weather right now can do the weather, they can do the fish mapping service, and they can do music. So you're, you have the ability to get everything in there. So for example, if you're thinking about moving on to the weather and the fish mapping, don't start with the basic antenna with the music. Just do it all. You right. can do it all. Right. 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 And, and you can uh, uh, subscribe to any one of the... Uh, you know variations. You can get weather and fish mapping, or you can get music, or you can get both. So, gotcha. so there's not a, as much of a limitation there. Uh, but then uh, the uh, the music portion uh, coming out of the, the control box that's behind the dash is what we call analog audio, meaning all you need is an auxiliary jack on a stereo. You're, you don't. It doesn't need to be Sirius XM ready. The stereo doesn't need. It. You don't even need a stereo. You can go just right into an amp okay. and control all your music right here from your oh, MFD. Oh really? Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Where's it really all start for guys? Probably get all, a lot of information online or give you guys a call? Yeah, yeah. The, the best place to start is um, SiriusXM.com forward slash marine. Or uh, we've got a really great video library um, that tells you a lot about how to use the service and what, you know, what we really offer. And that's uh, uh, SiriusXM.com forward slash marine library. Go check that out. You'll be rocking and rolling and making sure you're not rocking and rolling on the way home because you know what the weather is all about. Right. Dan, thanks again. It's always great you're to welcome. see you. My pleasure.